You have no idea how high I can fly. Ten, nine. Oh my eight, God! Okay, it's seven, happening. Everybody, six, stay calm. What's the procedure? Five, five, four, one. What's the procedure? Four, stay three, calm. Wait, two, wait, 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 wait. Two, one. Calm down. Fire. Ever since their inception, way back in 2019, Space Force have been pioneers in a field that we didn't even know that we needed pioneers in. The protection and regulation of America's interests in space. The Space Force Netflix series, helmed by Steve Carell, attempts to make a mockery of this year-old institution in ways that don't always quite land. Watching the first few episodes of Space Force, I was convinced this was another screenplay written up by the office's great Michael Scarn. Yeah. Boom, freeze! Michael Schoon, FBI, you know what you did. Boom, boom, uh, boom! I mean, come on. The name Mark R. Naird? 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 Nard? Nard? It's such a Michael Scarn type name, you know? There's something to that. Naird? Nard? The Nard Dog. It's a nard dog. It's all starting to come together. The whole first half of the show comes off as a really poorly written screenplay, with Steve Carell's character just embodying everything cringy and kind of lovable about The Office's Michael Scott. That's about as far as I can take the analogy, though. Carell's character really starts to mellow out towards the end of the series, losing a lot of the buffoonery that they instilled in him during the first few episodes. Which is one of my biggest problems with the show in general. They try to make Steve Carell's character both an idiot and a competent leader. And realistically, you can't have both. They open the show with Naird receiving his fourth star, becoming a four-star general. And at no point before this had they even alluded to the fact that he may be an idiot. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> I'm assuming that it takes a lot of work and diligence and a certain level of IQ to become a general at all, let alone a four-star general. The level of incompetence that he shows at times completely contradicts what the story is trying to tell us he is. He's always trying to contradict scientists or force his idea into motion even when he knows what he's doing is wrong which is something a general I assume would probably never do. I took this as kind of like a slight towards the current president, maybe trying to mock his distrust of scientists or, you know, just anybody that doesn't agree with him to begin with. Or maybe I'm just reading too deeply into the whole thing. Who knows? The beginning couple of episodes of this show are frankly a little hard to sit through. If I wasn't planning on doing this review, I would have stopped by episode three. Just like with The Office, it took Carell and Daniels a little bit of time to really get their footing on what they wanted to do. I absolutely loved John Malkovich in this show. He started to have a more involved role in the show towards the latter half of it, which is probably why I ended up liking that half of the show more than the first. The idiocy of Naird and the reasoning mind of Mallory really kind of meshed together and it worked really well for me. They managed to acknowledge President Trump without actually acknowledging him at all, which I'm going to give them credit for. They keep his references in check by simply just calling him POTUS all of the time. But they also take jabs at his excessive tweeting, his need for everybody around him to be in agreement with him, and a lot of the other unsavory traits that our president currently has. They also left a lot of the plot lines unfinished towards the end of the show, which makes me think that they want a second season and actually, they do want a second season, and I don't know if they're going to get it. We're going to have to see what the audience thinks once everybody's gotten a chance to see it, but I'm not feeling very hopeful about it at all. I ended up enjoying the show for what it was. If you're looking for The Office set in space, you're not going to find it here. There was none of that signature cringe that The Office brought to the table, and it's not as funny or as memorable. I'm going to give Space Force a 5 out of 10. Steve Carell has done a lot of great things since he was on The Office. This, however, does not go on that list. Let me know what you thought about the series when you get around to watching it. Leave a like, subscribe if you can, and I'll see you guys next time.